Welcome, everybody, to the Sheridan Report on the Grueling Truth Sports Network. The Sheridan Report is brought to you by MyBookie.ag. To get up to 100% cash back bonus on your first $300 deposit, make sure you put in promo code TGT100 or go to thegruelingtruth.com and click on the banner at the top of the page. I am your co-host, Mike Goodpaster, and right now I'd like to welcome him from the Sheridan Report, Bobby Sheridan. How you doing, Bobby? Mike, I'm a little bit tired this morning, but I'm happy. We had a great night last night, and if you remember, we started yesterday's show off. We, we were disappointed from the previous night that we had a, a real chance to have a nice score, and it got out of our grasp, but I said, no, we're getting back on the horse. And Mike, that horse came in way ahead last night. We did a great job, our picks, and for the fans, and we were happy about that. And most of today – is uh, gone in terms of baseball, but we've got a big basketball game tonight. You've got some hockey, and let's see if we can have a, some winners here for them to, again today. All right, Bobby. So get us started off of Major League Baseball. All right, Mike. Well, you know, Wednesdays and Thursdays we talked about, these are days that are, are a lot of day games, and but today is, you know, especially true. We, we've got really nothing going on left. Um, the, the, the Reds this morning were, were a play for us at, at the price, the value, and we're still in that game. We're losing one nothing in the eighth. That was a nice 160 dog, 170. And then our top play is the Rockies. They're winning 7 to nothing. So we'll take that. That's early still, but that's 7 nothing, and that was a really nice uh, straight play for us today in the top play, and that's gone. The three-team party mix and match, you still have two of those alive. There's 11-15 Pacific start with the Rays trying to salvage a game after getting swept in that doubleheader yesterday. And then the Red Sox, who are now playing good baseball, and they got David Price going tonight at five. So if you like to mix and match with the parlays, you can. there's still two of those alive, and you can hit that with the NBA play we're going to give you or one of Mike's NHL plays, or you can pick one of your own baseballs later in the day. Real quick, we have um, a listener question if you want to take it before you start. Perfect. Let's do it. All right, we got Luis from San Antonio, Texas, wants to know if, he said he woke up a little late today, <laughs> there's only four baseball games here, he said, what do you think about a parlay of the Nationals, the Rays, Red Sox, and Angels, because it pays 5-1? to one? Well, you know, the thing about that, what he's trying to do is he's trying to, you know, connect four favorites, and... You know, that's a good plan. I mean, I, I like that plan, except for me, you know, I was looking at those, those – of course, I like the Rays and Red Sox. I think you're on the right side there, and those are really good opportunities to win. Now, the Nationals and Angels are going to be your shaky ones, in my in my opinion. Yeah, because the, Eagles, the Nationals uh, haven't been able to beat anybody lately. The Nationals have really been struggling, and, and, and Strasburg has, has not been – money he's been okay he's been above average he's been okay and he could win that game today and you know um that that's a possibility you can win that game it's a one o'clock start in the pacific and and you can get going on your parlay and then you you know you're ending it with the angels who are trying to sweep that series and that that's a real surpriser for me mike because toronto had come in hitting the ball pretty well playing good baseball i fully expected them to be competitive in this series and the angels have really really put a good two games together against them and they have a chance for the sweep i don't really trust the angels trying to get the sweep tonight um aaron sanchez is capable but yet i didn't use toronto as a straight play so that that should tell you that i you know i'm really confused about that game i'm going to give the green light to him i'm going to say go ahead and, and, and take a shot with your parley at five to one and you know what i'll do it with you i'll give you some good karma i'm going to do it small with you that's a five to one payoff um I'm not in love with the Angels or Nationals, but I, I lean to those sides. So let's do it. All right, Bobby. Um, go ahead, then. All right. So, anyways, um, it's a good opportunity to realize that on Wednesdays and Thursdays is, is a nice time to buy the report. Spend the $10. Uh, the money goes to my computer guy. He, he, he gets it. He pays off a few bills and makes himself a little bit of money. And, and um you know, that's why we only charge $10, and, and it, it'll get you on these major league games um, on the Wednesdays and Thursdays morning stuff and, and give you an idea the night before. Um, we have it posted, like last night was around 1130 Pacific, so 230 Eastern, plenty of time. Um, 
I'm I'm really happy with the rate with the uh, Rockies' way to come back in that series, Mike. Hopefully they can hang on to that, and hopefully the Reds can give us a shot here late in that game. You know they're losing one nothing late, and they got two outs already in the eighth, so that's not looking good. Anyhow, um, are you ready to go for some hockey? Oh, sure. I'm always ready to go for some hockey. And if you're listening <laughs> north of the border and you like hockey or you're in the States, make sure you check out Survive in Advance today where we had Stuart Mason, who is one of the beat writers for the Columbus Blue Jackets. And we had our own NHL beat writer, Sam McGinnis, on to talk a little hockey playoffs. Make sure you check that out on thegrillingtruth.com. Um, you can also find it on Spotify, iHeartRadio. You, you all know the drill if you listen to us. So tonight, we got the Columbus Blue Jackets, who are minus 120 against the Bruins, who are a plus 100. I like the Jackets here. I think the thing that stands out to me is the Blue Jackets have been more physical. Um, the Bruins haven't been able to do anything on their power play. And if you can't score on a power play against the Blue Jackets, and the Blue Jackets are a really good power play defensive team, it's hard to score on them when everybody's there. And Bobrowski has played out of his mind through these playoffs. I don't think anybody thought that the Blue Jackets would be 6-1 and one at this point in the playoffs. I think most people thought they'd get swept by Tampa Bay and already been done. I like Columbus here. It's minus 120, so it's not a huge, huge underdog or anything. But I think you could parlay that possibly with the Avalanche or the Sharks. And I say possibly because this is a game I'm not 100% sold on either way. I lean towards the Avalanche. I'm going to go with them at home because I think if they lose this game, I think they're dead in this series. So I, I'm going to go with the Avalanche to even a series up. They're a minus 125. Colorado, or Columbus is a minus 120. So you can parlay them together, or we can parlay them with one of Bobby's top plays, which to me you know, Mike, leads us to the NBA, buddy. Yeah, leads us to the NBA, and, and uh, okay, so I'm taking this as Columbus is your top play, and then you're going to throw in Colorado. Um, yeah. Well, okay, uh, this is the best play left on the board. I, I had two top plays today that, that uh, you know, this is going to make or break my day, basically, is the Rockies and the Sixers. Okay, guys, the Rockies is winning 7 nothing. We can get the Sixers. It'll be a great day. It's, it's a much different day than yesterday. Uh, where we had a lot of depth and we had parlays working and we had all kinds of odds going. Today's just boom, boom. You know, you got two stri- two straights, two top plays, and, and that's how it goes sometimes. So um, let's lead you into the Sixers. You know, here we go. The Sixers um, are hosting the Raptors. This is game three. And, and you know, Mike, um, I was really proud of game two because – Toronto really waxed in in game one. It was only a 13-point spread, but they were so impressive in doing it. But I pointed out that, you know, this is a team Toronto made 14 straight shots in the first and second quarter and was only up 43-42 to at one point in that game, you know, after those 14 shots. And then they went on and continued to play a, a solid second half and won that game. But the three quarters in that game won. Three of the four quarters were two, one, and two, with Toronto winning those those quarters by two, one, and two. That's it. And then an eight-point first quarter, so the 13-point margin. So we, we thought, okay, this is a game Philadelphia is going to step up game two, make the adjustments. And I was really proud of that game because they made the adjustments. And where did they make the adjustments? They made the adjustments on defense. And they were able to uh, really hold Siakam from going crazy. He shot a low percentage. They held a lot of the uh, other players, not named Leonard, to a really bad percentage. And on offense, they ran they ran efficiently on offense. They're capable with Harris or Butler having big games. Embiid's their leader, and he still hasn't had a monster game yet. He could. He could. That could happen, especially at home. You've got Reddick that, that can hit those solid threes. They've got bench players in it, Monroe, all doing a good job. And so, and then that doesn't even mention Ben Simmons, who can't shoot, but he does everything else. So this is a solid team. But what I like today when I read off some quotes and I read some things is that, you know, these guys are very focused. That win is going to only help their confidence in coming home to a great fan base. Toronto now has to go and prove that they're worthy. And this, is, this game, to me, is, is a huge, huge game. 
for the Sixers. And I think they're going to come up with it, Mike. I think they're going to come up with it and take the lead 2-1 to one in this series. And a quote that I like that Jimmy Butler said, they talked about, oh, Ennis came off the bench and gave him 13 points, and Monroe had a couple buckets and this and that. And he said, you know what? What was great, they came off the bench and they guarded. Okay, Philadelphia has their plan. They got to play defense, Mike. This is going to be a defensive game again tonight, and they're all in on this. And I think they're going to beat Toronto in this series. Therefore, they're going to win tonight, game three. Right. Getting a point and a half, you know, and that's a tough play for me. I have, a, I have a question, and it's from me. Um, let's see. Okay. You see, do you think the Sixers are going to beat the Raptors in the series? I do, unless Kawhi Leonard is Michael Jordan. All and right. he could be. Do you believe he could the, be in this series. Do you believe the Bucks will beat the Celtics, or the Celtics will beat the Bucks? I like the Bucks. Do you like the Blazers over the Nuggets, or Nuggets over the Blazers? I like the Blazers. Okay. Um, Rockets, Warriors. Rockets. How sure are you on those four? Pretty sure. I mean, the Rockets, I'm taking a shot there. They're, they're, yeah. they're down Yeah, But those this, is, this is my point. This is my thought, because I just play around with shit on here, so I can talk to you about stuff. And right. those are the same four I think are going to win. And if you bet fifty dollars on all four of those to win their series, the payoff is two thousand one hundred and twenty-five dollars. The the, the the new payoff starting right now. The way the, the payoff right as now. of right now on the Sixers, Bucks, Trailblazers, and Rockets winning the series would be two thousand one hundred and twenty-five dollars on a fifty-dollar bet. Put it in. You know, I mean, it's going to be hard to go 4-0, and of course, but that's got a great shot, and that's how you make money. Yeah, you know, I, I'm just asking, what, what's your you know? opinion of that bet? Yeah, I like it. And, and I, I think it's a great bet, and of course, you know, the obvious is that you've got uh, a couple series that are, are going to be still tough ones to win, like the Sixers series and, and the Blazers series, because, you know, they're an underdog now going to... Well, I think uh, all I mean, four I mean, of these series are up one, in the one, air. And... The thing that strikes me about making that bet is, number one, the odds... And number two, if the Rockets win <clears throat> game three, game that three. plus 500 right. probably drops to plus 200. Exactly. So now's the time to do it. And the Rockets are favored in game three by four. Yeah. All right. so, it was just something to know, think I, about it, if you wanted to hit something fairly large. And Hey, you know what, Mike? Let's do it. I like it. You know, I, I like the suggestions like that. I like the caller, too. And I put that in, by the way, caller. <laughs> I put it in. Hundred bucks was five fifty five. I think. I yeah, because twenty dollars on the bet I just told you pays eight hundred and fifty. So you're looking Mike, at let's do it forty two to one. Yep, those are decent odds. Forty forty two to one was the Buster Douglas odds. Right? Yes, it was. That's <laughs> what I was going to bring up next. But you know how I am, and since I do, Mike and. And that's you, lead us into our yeah, that's what I was going to say. It's the perfect lead-in <laughs> to what we do. You know, and the other thing is this. If you wanted to get crazy with that, the Celtics are plus 170. If you took them, you'd blow it out of the charts what the odds were. But I think the Bucks are going to win. I do, too. I uh, put it in for 20 bucks. Hell, great. it wins 850. It's worth a shot. I'll tell you what. The, the Bucks are plus two tomorrow night in game three. <laughs> You know, that's going to be a, a something we're top talk play. About. <laughs> yeah, that could be a top play, Mike. Uh, anyhow, yeah. um, Philadelphia tonight, guys, it's not going to be easy. We got that name Kawhi Leonard out there. You know, he might lead them all away, Mike. He, he looks like he's that good right now. And so as long as he just isn't Jordan tonight, I think Philadelphia will beat him. I Hold agree. him from not being Jordan. And you guys all know what that means, just being better than everybody else and just completely taking over the game. But you know what? Embiid has the capability of doing that in stretches tonight, dominating the paint. So let's see what happens. Philadelphia's going to out-rebound. They've been rebounding them every game. Regular season, postseason, they're going to out-rebound them. And I'll tell you what, if you, if you believe Pat Riley from the Lakers, rebound equals rings. That was his mantra in the 88 uh, repeat year. All right, Bobby. What do we got for on this day? 
Okay, Mike, on this day, we're going to take you right into your baby, which is boxing. Um, this day in 2015, only four years ago, Floyd Mayweather Jr. beat Manny Pacquiao on point. It went the full 12 rounds, world welterweight unification fight, shatters all financial records for a boxing match on this day. Yeah, I, I think that Mayweather made like $300 million and Pacquiao made like $150 million. Um, and, and this is a fight that in 2009 was predicted as being the highest grossing fight in history. And I think that it would have been one of the greatest spectacles in sports history on a par with an Ollie Frazier maybe even if they fight this fight in 2009. Unfortunately, both sides couldn't get together. The fight didn't happen until 2015, where they fleece people for 100 bucks a pop. Um, put it like this, the failure to arrange the Mayweather-Pacquiao fight was named the 2010 Event of the Year by the ring. That was not making the fight, was the Event of the Year. Um, 2014, there were some negotiations, and I remember the big thing was Mayweather and Pacquiao, I think it might have been at a Lakers game, but I know it was an NBA game, actually met each other and talked, they ended up fighting. Now, there was a huge amount of hype here. This was the biggest fight of this century, and it was a dud. Um, the other problems I have were, you know, they talked about, Manny Pacquiao used steroids, but everybody likes Manny, and we've talked about this before, so everybody just kind of acted like it was no big deal. Before this fight, or after, I think it was right before the weigh-in or right after the weigh-in. I think it was after the weigh-in. Floyd Mayweather took an IV solution. That is illegal by Bada, USADA, whoever is doing the drug testing. Because by doing that, you can dilute a sample, a urine sample, for after the fight, which would make nothing show up. So I think there's a chance both were dirty. When they came out to fight, Pacquiao, after the fight, claimed that he'd hurt his shoulder before the fight. I don't believe any of this. I believe this was like Mayweather-McGregor. Mayweather-McGregor, another fight that brought in a huge amount of money. And I think that the fighters went in with a gentleman's agreement that nobody gets hurt. I really do. I know that happened with Mayweather-McGregor. I know enough people in the boxing and yeah. MMA world that know what's going on that that fight was a controlled fight that was right. supposed to make McGregor look better than people thought and supposed to make it look exciting because, let's face it, Mayweather had screwed every, everybody out of $100 for pay-per-view against Manny Pacquiao. My question is, is, was Mayweather Pacquiao on the level? Because it was a really boring fight. It was a unanimous decision. I think two one sixteen one twelves and a one eighteen one ten for Mayweather. But neither one of them really did anything the entire fight. And I find it hard to believe. You know, Mike, what? Yeah, I'm sorry. I thought you paused for a minute. Um, I was going to take the opportunity to ask you a question. Why? Um, why? I understand the, the, the Conor McGregor deal. But why would Pacquiao not want to go in there and, and he just couldn't beat him at that point? Well, you got to get the and fight. So, and so they, I mean, the thing is this. The fight didn't have to be oh, made. And, and I'm not saying that it was, you know, just one-sided on who was taking it easy. I think they went in. They're both older. They were both nearing 40 years old at the time. I don't think it is beyond comprehension that they both just decided that they were going to take it easy. No reason for anybody right. to get hurt. We'll laugh to the bank with almost a half a billion dollars. I mean, is it that hard to believe from things we've seen in boxing and in sports in general? No, but I missed that fight. Uh, how did um, how did I, I I can already see how nothing Mayweather happened. The fight. It was Pacquiao. But, yeah, nothing happened. Pacquiao chased Mayweather. Mayweather danced. They throw a punch here or there. It was an absolute joke. It was bad for boxing, and it, it maybe it's just because that they were too old to do it the way they used to do it. But even with that being said, this is a fight that should have happened six years before it did. Six years before it did, I think you have an all-time epic clash that I think Manny Pacquiao wins. Because I think in 2009, Pacquiao was better than Mayweather. And I think when you look at their entire careers, I know Mayweather went undefeated, but Pacquiao fought the better competition. And Pacquiao's a guy that was the world champion at 112, 
And he was a world champion at 154. Not many guys oh. have ever done that before. Now, that is also a way that we know that he was using steroids. But still, steroids right. or not, it's a nice accomplishment. And let's face it, 90% of the guys that you see in sports are using something to make themselves better yeah. now. Yes. Even well. in tennis, golf, everywhere. Yeah. And cornhole yeah. coming up here in a couple months if we can get Risley to play. <laughs> is Risley on steroids? <laughs> no, I think I'm. I, well, I know he probably is. I mean, but that's because he's old and you got to have steroids <laughs> to be able to survive once you get past yeah, a right. certain age. But yeah, now I'm that's thinking, right. you know, I'm thinking about shooting up daily. Just stick a needle in my cycle? butt yeah. and just come out buff as hell for that contest. Have you but talked to Steve at all recently? It's, it's never going to happen. Is, no. Gonna, no, nobody wants to play me in ball. anything. Nobody does. <laughs> I'm a killer. Well, Mike, I hope it happens because I want to go up there and see you guys up there. But that would be neat. And at the Westgate Hotel. Anyhow. Um, maybe maybe we could just out. show up and we could act like Grizzly's there. And I'll shut him out because that's what would happen if he was there. So. Very true. <laughs> but it's just hey, it's, it's a shame down. it's a shame that people don't have enough respect for themselves that when some jerk like me starts talking crap to them they just don't step up and beat me <laughs> well you know maybe he's laying in the weeds and he's going to accept we'll see well he lives in california so it'd be legal to lay in the weed but go ahead <laughs> yeah the mets mets won that game mike one enough and they had a little shot in the ninth inning and we struck out and Noah Syndergaard, complete game, and hit a home run for the only run. So, wow, what a performance he, he gave. Yeah, great job, Noah. All right, anything else, Bobby? Right. <laughs> no, we're good, Mike. Let's go with those Sixers tonight, and Rockies hold on. It'll be a good day. Oh, we just need the Sixers tonight and two hockey games, and it'll be an all right day. But That's right, Columbus and Avalanche. All right, let's go with them. All right, guys. We're and, for go- the caller, and for the caller. And for the caller, let's get that four-team favorites baseball party. Yeah, what the hell? I threw some on it. We'll just all ride together. We'll either all go down together or all win together. So, Luis. No, no, win together, not go down. Luis, I said one or the other. Luis, this is all on you (laughs) because it's the start of the month and my rent's due. And now, Luis, my rent rides on those four baseball games. But I want to thank Luis for asking the question and for listening Anybody else wants to send questions, you can do it through Twitter, at Grueling Truth, or you can do it on Spreaker while the show's going on. If you go to Spreaker.com and go to the Grueling Truth show page website, or not website, but show page. Um, remember, mybookie.ag, up to 100% bonus, up to your first $300 deposit. We will be back tomorrow at 2 o'clock to talk a little baseball, and then tomorrow night at 8 o'clock with the Grueling Truth Kentucky Derby special, and our special guest will be... Who, Steve? I had called you Steve. Bobby. <laughs> it, our special guest will be uh, Phil Rankin of the Handicapping Guide and Vince DeGregory, famous uh, jockey's agent. He's been an agent to seven Hall of Fame jockeys. Seven. You can look him up on Google. He's a older gentleman now in his early 80s, but he's done it all, been around it all in, in horse racing, and I'm looking forward to that tomorrow night. All right. So Vince DeGregory and Phil Rankin from the Handicapping Guide. And make sure you go check out the Sheridan Report at thesheridanreport.com or follow Bobby on Twitter at Sheridan Report. You can buy the Sheridan Report for $10 a day or $50 a month. Make sure you get up on that. Guys, we're going to wrap the show up for tonight or today. I want to remind everybody you can hear all of our shows on iHeartRadio, iTunes, TuneIn, Spreaker, Stitcher, everywhere basically, Spotify, you name it, we're there. So, for Bobby Sheridan, I'm Mike Goodpastor. You've been listening to The Grueling Truth, where the legends speak.